Welcome back to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. I've the news you need to know about. We run you through the fan Q&A where we answer fans, fans' questions. Probably the first positive, well, I guess week one was sort of positive because we won. Uh, but yeah, this was a good week to be, a better week to be a Dolphins fan uh, <laughs> than it has been, that's for sure. So, let's get into the news. A lot of news um, to talk about. Some unfor- Again, some unfortunate injury news. Um, we'll start with this because I feel like it's the... Uh, I don't know. Actually, we'll start here. Uh, Dolphins working out potential edge player replacements for Jalen Phillips. Obviously, the Dolphins have signed t- uh, Tyus Bowser, who back in the day when he was coming out of Houston... I think he was a second round pick. I actually liked him. I thought he was a good player. Obviously, he hasn't had the best career. Um, I think he was a second round pick. Uh, but um, I thought he did really well against the Patriots, and he knows the system. Obviously, he played in Baltimore, played in this system, even in Seattle. It's a very similar system to what we run in Miami. And I thought he did a good job. And obviously, Anthony Weaver has said in his press conferences that he we need better edge setters. And obviously, he thinks Tyus can can do that. So, and I guess we haven't talked about this either. Dolphins Jalen Phillips undergo season-ending knee su- surgery, suffered a partial ACL tear. Another awful, <laughs> just terrible injury news for the Dolphins. Um, I think I don't think we talked about that last week, but. Yeah, I think the most interesting thing is, is how does this affect his future as a Miami Dolphin? It's a bummer that he's hurt and we don't get to watch him. But I think, obviously, looking ahead to the future, it's like, so what do the Dolphins do with him? I would give him an extension, even though he's missed a lot of time in the last two seasons. Uh, even though he did play deep into last year, uh, he played into December. I believe that game was, maybe it was November, late November. Maybe. No, that was a December game. That was a Christmas game. Christmas something. Maybe it was Christmas Eve game or something. Uh, whatever. I think it was December against the Jets. But he has missed time due to injury. And obviously he was dealing with concussions coming out of the University of Miami. It wasn't like these issues with uh, the Achilles and obviously now the knee. And he got hurt in a really unlucky manner. So... I hope he's extended. I don't think... I mean, he's one of the best young pass rushers in the NFL. I don't think the Dolphins should get rid of a player like that. And it looked like he was going to have a career season. And uh, unfortunately, that was taken away. But Chop and Tyus and uh, Muhammad Kamara. We're going to talk about Bradley Chop here in a second with his return date. But uh, we, re- I, it's going to be interesting to see how Chop improves over the season because that's obviously what we're looking for he's had a few moments but obviously hasn't done a whole lot but we do have one of the best third down deep well according statistically the best third down defense um our pass rush has been really good most of that is coming from the interior though not necessarily the outside but i actually think chop has had a, a, a couple of a few nice plays to start the year Especially on like some hustle plays uh, to force some throwaways from the quarterbacks because of his speed. Uh, he's done some nice things in coverage too. So he's having not a bad year. Uh, so we'll, hopefully he can continue to improve. But <clears throat> hopefully we see like drastic improvements in terms of pressures on the quarterbacks and stuff like that on the quarterback. Because uh, it could be Chop and Jalen as the two edge players for the, for the future. And we'll see if he can solidify that or not. Uh, this next two story comes from Pro Football Rumors. No target date for Dolphins Bradley Chubb to return. So, when addressing the matter at the end of September, head coach Mike McDaniel did not suggest that there were any setbacks in Chubb's recovery, saying only that Bradley had a pretty good... Had a pretty severe injury. He's doing well in his progression. Defensive coordinator Anthony Weaver said, quote, Chubb is in all of our meetings. Gives me the feel that we will see him at some point this season. Hopefully in November. Probably not in October. 
but hopefully in November we can see Bradley. And then he's got to get back in football shape and all that. Gotta, maybe they just sit him for a season. Uh, I think it's going to come down to how good of a season we're actually having. Uh, if we're not having a good season, I don't think he'll play this year, which is fine. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen, though. I think we're starting to kind of get our groove a little bit. And our defense is actually pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty solid defense. So I'm excited to see if we can get Tua back healthy and we can, can kind of continue. If we continue to have the best third down defense in the league with an offense that hasn't given them any help, I'm interested to see how far this team can go because uh, Anthony's done a really good job on the defense side of the football. More unfortunate uh, injury news. This next two story comes from Pro Football Rumors. Dolphins safety Javon Holland ex- expected to miss time. As the Dolphins uh, stopped their... Okay, hold on. Let's get to the actual... Um, Holland left with a... <clears throat> excuse me. Holland left... Excuse me. Holland's left hand... Okay, I don't know why I'm thinking it's to the left. Holland's left hand was in a cast following the game with some discussion of surgery between he and his teammates per Omar Kelly of the Miami Herald. An extended absence by the star safety would be a significant blow to Miami's defense that entered week four, just uh, just allowing 162 passing yards per game, the fifth lowest in the NFL. Uh, there is really no other news on this. I don't really know the severity of this injury. I don't think anybody really does. Obviously, the bye week, I think we'll obviously know more pro- either during or after the bye week. Obviously, the bye week's almost over. But, um, I don't know. It's a weird injury. Like, I don't even remember when he got hurt. Uh, just an unfortunate injury. I hope he doesn't miss a significant amount of time. Uh, hopefully, this isn't as bad as his. I mean, it's pretty vague what's really going on. Uh, if I could just read that part said yeah and this is also another one of those things holland is entering the final year of his contract another big decision to Dol- the big decision the dolphins have to make obviously i would extend javon even though he did miss time last year as well we'll see how much time he misses this season um it's not yet known if ir will be in play here but the dolphins are readying to play without their top safety So we'll see. I guess nobody really knows. Hopefully it's nothing serious, but obviously he's going to miss probably the, at least the Colts game. He missed a ton of He missed so many games last year, way more than expected. Uh, he's a great player. Uh, what else do I really have to say about him? Uh, he deserves an extension. He's phenomenal. One of the most athletic, can cover an insane amount of ground, great open field tackler, great in man coverage too. I think it's the most underrated part of his game. And he was probably having his best season when it comes to covering in man coverage. In man coverage, and the additional Marcus May, who I thought honestly has looked better than Poirier, has really been able to free him up. And uh, so I would have liked to have seen those two play together, but hopefully he can come back soon. I, I hope he doesn't miss like a ton of time. Like last year. And hopefully we get a clear answer soon about it. Because that's what happened last year. Like, oh, I was going to come back. Then he just never came back. At least for a long time. The good news is, is um, the rookie safety out of Cal played really well in preseason. And hopefully he can kind of step in. And either that or Marcus May. And, I mean, that's fine too. Marcus May and Jordan Poirier. I'm not, I don't think that's a bad uh, safety duo by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but yeah, Patrick McMorris, who had a really good preseason, maybe they do some stuff with him. Uh, we'll see. But the Dolphins have depth at that position. Elijah Campbell played really well for them when he had to come in in that game. Made a really big play on a screen pass. So <clears throat> they have depth there. It's like it's like out of all position safety, they've got some pretty good depth at that position. I think that's all the news. I don't. I think we covered it all. We didn't talk about the dumb Tyree Kill stuff. That just seemed. I don't know. That just seems kind of like. Uh, well, from a front office, like I don't think the Dolphins would ever do that. They just extended him. Tyree Kill seems to be having fun with it. And the people that are saying, and this is what I will say, the people that are saying that the Dolphins lost that trade, I think are insane. I I don't. I, first of all, it's not. You got to look at it from. 
the our perspective as fans, we haven't had a player like that in a long time. And he gave us two phenomenal seasons. We hadn't had 11 wins since 2008, over 10 years. So we've accomplished a lot since he's. we've made that trade with, uh, with Tiger Kill. We've had the best offense we've ever had since 1995. Those are all huge milestones for our fan base. I think it's kind of dumb when Chiefs fans or f- people don't even have allegiance to who aren't fans of uh, certain, especially fan bases that haven't had a ton of success in a long time, it, it doesn't, it's like, yeah, I'm sure it doesn't affect you. Or you might see it in a different light. But I, I think the Dolphins, if he left right now, I think I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't redo anything. Um, we scored 70 points at, in Hard Rock Stadium. Like that, those are things, all of the things that I just said, two of them uh, leading the league in pass yards, all of those things. Like that's something we hadn't seen in Miami in a very long time. So I, I think either way, the Dolphins won that trade. I don't think I would. Like I said, I don't. I wouldn't redo that trade at all. The only thing I would redo is the Higbenogany pick. That's 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 pretty much the only thing I would redo. I'm sure there's other things I can think of. If I sat down and think about it, but yeah, from a Dolphins fan, hardcore Dolphins fans perspective, the Tiger Kill trade was an absolutely massive W, and I hope he finishes his career in Miami, and I don't think he's going to be traded anytime soon. At least I don't think so. So, yeah, that's what I think about those rumors, and especially the, the people, dude, oh my god, like I said, like just a bunch of ignorant people don't know what they're talking about. Um, <laughs> I love the all so many Dolphins fans who that miss Tua. That's one of the things I at least I have enjoyed that uh, since Tua has been hurt, we, I think we all do miss him. Um, and especially the way our defense played earlier in the season, like this just kind of moves your t- bad taste in your mouth because there's like I mean even that Seattle game. We could have easily, we could have, we totally could have won that game if we had our starting quarterback. And uh, even against, I mean, the Titans is another example. Our defense is, has played really good football this year, better than expected. Uh, so let's talk about this game that the Dolphins finally get another win. Huge win on the season. They really needed this, uh, especially without Tua. To get a win is, is is massive, but I think they learned a lot. Not only did they get the win, but I think they found some things in this game. They were going against a really good secondary, one of the best in the NFL, one of the best cornerback duos in the NFL with Jonathan Jones and um, Christian Gonzalez, who's a really good player. Uh, and they did a really good job, I thought, especially with the backup quarterback. They moved the ball the entire game. A lot more under center runs, a lot more... North and South runs. Uh, we rarely ran on the edge unless it was under center. We did. We didn't do any of that shotgun pitch nonsense. Those C gap runs, and uh, which was great. Uh, we limited the screens in this game. We faked a bunch of them, which I thought was awesome. Uh, so we didn't. We we pre- we really did what has worked offensively. Like oh, let's just stick to what's worked in the games that we have played, and we stuck to our guns. Um, Jalen and Raheem Moster was great to see Raheem back. They gave us a different type of run. No offense to A Chain, but some of those runs that they had in this game, especially with Moster, were gritty, and we needed that for this team. The return of Toronto Armstead cannot be understated enough. I thought Austin Jackson. Now, granted, they're not going against the best pass rushers in the world, but Austin Jackson and Armstead, they're a really good tackle duo, and I thought that showed in this game, especially in the run game when we have Armstead. It's a lot easier to, to, to run um, on the edges with him in the lineup, especially under center, <clears throat> with some of the zone concepts that we have. Alec Ingold had a phenomenal game. Uh... The run game, I think we found, okay, here's what works for this team. Uh, here's what works for this specific offensive line. And uh, I thought that was really good to see. And I thought Tyler Huntley, despite his stats, like if you look at his stats, his completions aren't great. 
Uh, I think he had like 30 attempts in this game, which is kind of crazy. But that goes to show you how much offense. Like now, granted, the Patriots' offense sucks, but this is not something that's new. Even in the Seahawks game, which is one of the better offenses in the NFL, the Dolphins got a lot of opportunities, and they really they stopped the Seahawks a ton in that game. They got two turnovers. They were playing really good defense against one of the more talented offenses. And if it wasn't for a busted coverage, and them not being able to move the ball. Honestly, if they just were able to move the ball even with that bust of coverage, who knows what happens in that game if Tua plays. So, so uh, what was my point about, <laughs> about Oh, the defense is really good. Um, and offensively, I kind of lost my train of thought. Oh, th- throwing the football I thought was much improved in this game. I thought Tyler Huntley had a really good game. He, like The thing that he has over Skyler that's a big deal is his confidence his poise in the pocket and his his ability to sense pressure and move in the pocket is so much better than any other quarterback that we have on the roster and that alone he should be our backup quarterback from the for the for the foreseeable future uh he also throws the ball better he throws the ball better on the run he's a way better decision maker there's not tyler huntley does nothing worse than skylar thompson the only like i said before the only thing that Skyler has is familiarity with the dang system. That's it. Uh, I was also really proud of the way that Waddle and Hill played in this game, even though they didn't get like a ton of touches. They made big plays when they had to, and they were like they gave great effort. Like on the touchdown with Alec Ingold, I, uh, <clears throat> I think or it could have been the run, a big the big run on that drive before, but Tyreek Hill motioned out to fake a screen and he really sold it like there was a lot of effort given even if the ball wasn't going to them and uh, I think that's just a testament to the organization and the team really it was a really gritty win and I really do have confidence in Huntley moving forward we just couldn't finish drives even on a day where we had honestly some of the worst luck of all time that I've ever seen a football team have I know everybody's gonna be like oh the execution Danny Crossman but that was like crazy bad luck on some of those plays to have that many blunders on special teams and just you know the the bad snaps and all that kind of stuff it just was like what the, what you know out of everything that we can have happen with all the injuries and all that this also has to happen to us but despite all that the Dolphins still won the football game <laughs> even even with all the injuries and all the bad luck they still beat the Patriots on the road, which is very difficult to do, especially when you have that many blunders in a, in, in a football game. Uh, so this was a massive W. I feel a lot more confident in Huntley. I feel a lot more confident in the run game, especially with the offensive line getting healthier, and this bye week really helps with that. And Raheem and hopefully a can come back off the concussion against the Colts. Because with Raheem, Jalen, and A-Chain, you can do a lot of different stuff. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Raheem and A-Chain in the same backfield. A-Chain motions out uh, in the past game, which he hasn't really been able to do as much. We heard a lot about that in the offseason. We haven't seen it a whole lot. And hopefully we can see that even more with Raheem back. We do some more creative stuff with them both on the field. So I think some of that stuff is going to be really good. Jonu Smith was used a lot more in this game, which is a good sign. He looked really good. <laughs> uh, they really attacked Vatai, or I, 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 don't, I can't remember the the middle linebacker for the Patriots, but he struggles in coverage. They did a really good job of getting matchups on him. If A Chain didn't get hurt, I would assume we've done even more of that. Uh, so yeah, the pass game was a lot better. <clears throat> I thought Tyler Huntley looked really good, and his only second start, I thought he did a really good job, uh, and hopefully he can get even more comfortable to play a really bad defense in the Indianapolis Colts, and hopefully we can see bigger, more explosive plays in the pass game, especially on some of these deep throws. In terms of Odell Beckham, <clears throat> to be matched up with Christian Gonzalez, and you haven't really had an offseason, you haven't played all year, and you matched up with one of the best cover corners in the NFL, that's a tough task. He didn't really play all that much in this game, uh, so I'm excited to see how he's utilized going forward. Even he said he's also learning a new position, playing more inside receiver as at the slot position. Obviously, more used to the outside, so that's kind of interesting. <clears throat> it's obviously another hurdle he's gonna have, but I think he'll be fine. Uh, and so the the offensive round, other than two and not being in there, is pretty healthy, which is great. Uh, and I'm excited to see. I have faith in Tyler Huntley. I actually think he's a good player. Uh, he did make one really bad decision. 
he made two bad I'll, I'll, I'll point this out for all the good things that he did which i think he did do a lot of good things the, the two plays what that i was like what in the world the dropped interception to gonzalez well it wasn't a bad read he he should have just given up on the play he had pressure on the play if he had more of a clean pocket probably would have been a touchdown he ends up throwing her late thank god he didn't pick that off the other play was the two-point conversion where he should have just hit waddle but he thought he could score with his legs and ended up being an incomplete pass. Uh, but that that was an easy layup throw for a two-point conversion. But other than that, I thought he had a pretty good game. The pick doesn't bother me to Gonzalez. That was just I thought that was just a really good play by Christian. Obviously, he has confidence in Odell because he played with him in Baltimore. And it was just a really good play by the DB. So, I'm, I don't think... other than Yeah, I don't... I like what I saw from Huntley. And I don't think he's a bad decision maker, which, which is a good thing. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. The injuries are terrible, but I think the offense took a huge step in the right direction. We cut out all the stuff we sucked at and we couldn't execute right, which was just finally we did that. And we focused on the stuff that we do do well. And we've got Johnny Smith involved more in the offense. Uh, and I thought we found an identity in, in this this game, which is good. And hopefully that can carry over to the Colts. <clears throat> to the Colts game. And honestly, and I'm not even joking, the Patriots have one of the best secondaries in the NFL. And so it's going to be nice to play a defense like the Colts that are str- are struggling. And I'm excited to see what, what that healthy, relatively healthy Dolphins offense, offense can do against them, even though Tyler or two is hurt. Um, but I still think we could see some big plays with uh, Huntley. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, hopefully, the art, you know, the offensive line can stick together, and we can can can, can uh, continue uh, the good play. Uh, and that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next. One. I think we covered everything. I'm trying to think just real quick. Yeah, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>